Hello friends, uh, we are starting off uh, with our socket series. In this series, uh, we will discuss about uh, the various uh, types of the socket, whether it is uh, TCP or UDP. We will uh, discuss about uh, the communication between uh, these uh, client server uh, programs uh, on a TCP as well as on a UDP side. Also, we'll discuss about uh, some of the special socket types like uh, Netlink as we proceed uh, within this course. So let's start with the journal introduction for the socket. So socket is a bi-directional network communication mechanism uh, that helps in communicating within the local network as well as on a remote network. So socket will communicate through the processes. So these processes can reside on a same host as well as on a different host. And this other host can be on a same LAN network or on a different network also. So if we take an example of this socket, uh, like we have uh, our uh, web browser. Uh, so when we, uh, you know write some uh, url onto that like we have google.com so it will you know uh, search for uh, the page that resides on a server and uh, that implements sockets uh, like we do ssh like we do uh, ftp these all are the type of the tcp communication uh, between uh, the two processes uh, through the sockets so socket communicate between two or more processes on the local network as well as on a remote circuit that we have already discussed so socket is an abstraction through which the application implement the ipc for uh, sending and receive the data so here the ipc is inter-process communication so we have a different uh, uh, ipc mechanism uh, that helps in uh, communicating between the processes uh, within a system so if you don't know about uh, the different types of ipc you can check out my uh, link uh, from the previous session uh, that uh, you know defines all types of ipc mechanism so socket is also a type of uh, ipc so socket is uniquely identified by the ip address and the port so uh, in this uh, we have uh, the client and uh, server program so in order to communicate between the two we need the ip address and port number of the other host like we are sending some data from uh, client to server so we should know uh, the ip address as well as uh, the port number on which the server will be listening on in order to communicate with uh, with the server the same is with the client side so uh, sorry on the server side so it also hold uh, all the details related to the client so if the server wants to send some data to the client so they should know uh, the ip address and the port details of the client to which uh, the server will be sending the data so if we take an example of a uh, google.com so in this uh, when we hit google.com on the browser it will uh, you know uh, send the request to get the web page from the google servers so once uh, we hit that request uh, the server will uh, reply with the uh, you know google.com uh, web page so uh, but uh, these uh, works on a uh, web sockets because it's on a web so we'll discuss about that web circuit also in the coming lecture so we have uh, two host here host one and host two these are connected uh, through a router uh, maybe it may be a lan network so when the host one send some uh, you know uh, data from uh, uh, host one to host two it will have to pass through this uh, TCIP stacks uh, that is implemented on the kernel side and the application is on the user side. So the, when the packet is being sent, it has been received 
through the host tool and uh, this also have uh, TCIP stack implementation on the kernel side so it will uh, remove all the headers from the Ethernet frame uh, that is being received uh, uh, from uh, host one and then uh, the application will get the data so in this way uh, we have uh, the socket communication between uh, uh, two hosts so so we have discussed about you know uh, tcp stacks so how tcp stacks handle the ethernet frame uh, to you know uh, to pass the data to the application so in this uh, we have uh, the various uh, layers uh, for the osi on the left hand side so we have uh, the seven different uh, layers for the osi model but in the tcp ip stack we have uh, only the four layers so uh, what it does uh, actually it combines uh, some layers uh, to form uh, a single uh, layer on our TCIP stacks like we have the physical layer and the data link layer is a uh, uh, combined to get uh, you know the link layer on our TCIP stacks the same uh, we have uh, the IP layer uh, that is same here then we have the transport layer uh, that implements uh, the socket uh, interface with the application so this uh, transport layer holds the protocol uh, uh, description like uh, TCP and UDP and uh, while uh, we are passing our packet through this uh, interface it will uh, send the data to the application layer where uh, our application resides so in the application layer we combine uh, these three layers of the osi model that is session layer presentation layer and the application layer uh, so uh, so here we have uh, the ethernet uh, data uh, flow uh, through the various layers of the uh, tcip stack so the initial uh, when we send uh, the data from uh, uh, host A to host B as we were discussed in the last uh, example um, the router sends the Ethernet frame uh, to the uh, you know host so it will uh, be sent as a form of a Ethernet uh, packet so they have uh, various uh, headers included into that so the first one is a uh, uh, frame headers that we have IP headers TCP headers so these all headers are mapped to the various uh, you know uh, layers of the TCIP stacks so when these uh, three uh, main layers is been passed then only uh, the data is been left for application so here we have seen we have frame data IP and TCP uh, header data so in the next IP layer uh, this frame header has been removed by this uh, link layer and uh, the IP header uh, data has been removed in the transport layer and the transport layer will remove uh, the TCP uh, you know header to provide the actual uh, data uh, through the application layer so next uh, we are going to discuss about uh, system calls and what are the different types of system call so system call is important in the perspective like uh, when we are going to discuss about uh, the client and server code for a TCP connection uh, we will be implementing some APIs uh, that is called as a system call so we need to have a dis discussion about uh, uh, the difference between the system call and the generic APIs so let's start uh, with the system call so the system call is a request for a service that a user application make to the kernel so so this is you know the you know a request that is generated from uh, the user space uh, and uh, it will pass through the system call interface uh, which in turn uh, call the api uh, the code for that system call that resides within the kernel space so it is same as a normal API call but different in the way it is called so the in a normal uh, API we have uh, the code written within uh, the 
uh, API within the same uh, space, whether it is a user space or a kernel space. But uh, here, uh, in order to enhance the security of uh, the system call, uh, the APIs uh, are being you know exposed to the user space, and the code is being written within the kernel. So this is the way it is different from a normal API call. So the system call implements is hidden from the user application. So the user application uh, didn't know about uh, the code uh, for uh, the operation of that system call. So the code resides within the kernel space. We'll see uh, how it is implemented. So every system call is associated with a number and that helps the kernel to map to its implementation in the kernel space. So when we call a system call from a, you know, the user space program, then we will pass some uh, number uh, to this uh, system call so that it can call the API that is mapped to a particular number within uh, uh, the kernel space. We'll see how, how the, it is mapped. So there are different types of uh, system call. So first one is for process management. Like we have uh, the APIs or a system call for uh, process management that is fork, exit and wait. Uh, these we already discussed in the last session. So next is a uh, file management. So we have open, read, write, close. These APIs, uh, uh, you know, falls in the category for file management. Then we have device management, like we have the IOCTL call. It is also a system call. And we have information management, like sleep or alarm. So these are also uh, the system calls. So their code has been implemented in the kernel space. Then we have the communication management uh, APIs like we have SAMCAT uh, that is a shared memory so this implementation is being uh, there in the kernel space only so only the API headers are being exposed to the user space for its application so let's see how the system call uh, you know actually uh, works so in this uh, diagram we have the user space and the kernel space so in the user space uh, we call a system call so so user process executed so in a uh, this process we have written some system call so it execute to that particular system call so when the system call is invoked within the process it will generate a trap so trap is uh, you know a type of a software interrupt uh, that handles uh, you know some uh, uh, arithmetic uh, uh, you know errors uh, like division by zero and some other errors so when the trap is generated by this uh, system call it will switch from you know uh, the mode from user space to kernel space and uh, in between there is a system call interface and uh, this system call interface will map uh, this uh, call with the code so uh, when this trap is generated it will execute the system call and the code is residing on a kernel space so when this code is being you know executed it again returns uh, to the user space by setting the mode bit to one so these are uh, you know the uh, mode bits uh, zero for this kernel space and this for one for this user space so system call execute the trap to switch to the kernel mode every system call is mapped to a number uh, in a kernel space and system call will return to user space and setting mode to the user space so this is how the uh, you know the system call is executed on a high level so we'll uh, discuss uh, on a deep level how it the system call is being implemented so let's see uh, how it is implemented so here we have uh, the same uh, user space and the kernel space uh, and we have uh, one system call uh, socket so this is a system call we will be using uh, you know uh, in a server uh, and a client program when we will be uh, doing some practical implementation of the uh, socket so this socket api is a wrapper that is been in this uh, glibc library so 
this socket call when we uh, you know call this socket api it will pass through the system call interface and it will call the mapped uh, you know this uh, api the code for this uh, socket api in a kernel space and this mapped code will pass the data to the tcip stack so that the socket can communicate with the other host so uh, as we have this kernel space we have different uh, you know management uh, blocks uh, in a kernel space like we have a process management scheduler management memory management network management that we are uh, you know uh, right now discussing and uh, here we have the drive device driver layer then we have the hardware layer so the main point here is so as you know this uh, socket is a wrapper api over the system call api uh, that is been uh, you know defined in uh, syscall.h header file and uh, this socket api will call this system call api with a number for this api like we have uh, you know 368 number and when we call this call 368 it will generate a trap that will execute the you know code related to the number we have defined within this call and uh, in the kernel space in the kernel space uh, the mapped apis is on a format of sys underscore uh, socket in this case and uh, you have seen this uh, glfc implement wrapper around sys call api so this api is a you know the main api that helps in communicating with the kernel and uh, the you know the socket uh, the system call number is been defined in unistat.h header file uh, you can see it uh, on to a terminal so when system call is called from the user space the trap is invoked and related uh, call mapping from the uh, sys call table in the kernel space is checked so when we invoke this uh, api it will check the number for that particular system call into the system call table within the uh, you know kernel space so the system call table array is implemented in the kernel space for mapping the system call number with the kernel mapped api so here we have a small you know examples of few of the apis that has been mapped into the kernel like uh, we use uh, the uh, you know system call read for reading the data and write for uh, writing the data to a file uh, or to a socket so the system call number is zero here for the read and one for uh, write so the entry point the kernel entry point will be sys underscore read that is been defined in the kernel source fs uh, read underscore write dot c and uh, fs read write dot c so these um, apis are being defined in these uh, you know c files so we can check for these apis so let's uh, have uh, you know let's check the linux source code for that so let's see uh, the implementation of uh, the mapped system call uh, number within the kernel so this is a kernel source tree and uh, we need to check for x86 architecture so let's go for our arc folder and uh, then we need to see for x86 then go for the entry then go for the system call uh, then we have the system call for 64-bit x86 platform let's open this so we'll see here uh, there are list of uh, you know the system calls that is mapped to the kernel space apis and uh, every system call have some number uh, so this is uh, you know the complete uh, table for the system call uh, number mapping with the uh, implementation of the system call so let's check for our system call that we have discussed uh, that is socket so you see here uh, this is a system call socket 
the system call number is 41 and uh, it is mapped to the kernel space uh, api sys underscore 